200 years ago, on August 24, 1814, British forces entered Washington, D.C. and burned the Capitol building, the President's House, and most of the federal buildings. Next, Steve Vogel, author of Through the Perilous Fight, Six Weeks That Saved the Nation, uses his boat to take us on a river tour of the burning of Washington. After, after burning the Capitol, um, Ross and Coburn moved with the, the troops down uh, Pennsylvania Avenue to the White House. Uh, Dolly and James Madison had both left uh, a number of hours earlier. In the, um, the British uh, along the way stopped and, and talked to some uh, civilians asking uh, where Madison uh, was and were somewhat disappointed to learn that uh, he'd already left the city. As they approached the White House, they uh, passed a, a, a tavern on uh, the corner uh, right uh, near the, uh, the Treasury Building and uh, they actually went in to, to order dinner and uh, the uh, woman proprietor tried to send them off to another establishment but that didn't work and uh, uh, they uh, <coughs> ordered some chicken and then continued uh, down Pennsylvania Avenue and uh, entered the White House which uh, uh, they found unlocked. It, of course, been abandoned uh, in the previous hours. Uh, the, the, the servants had all left. And uh, entering it uh, in the dining room, they found the, the great feast that Dolly Madison had uh, ordered set uh, for the evening. And needless to say, they didn't hesitate to help themselves to it. Um, and you know, this is one of the, those remarkable stories that's, uh, that's actually quite true. Uh, that the, the British were uh, wined and dined at the White House and then uh, set the place afire. Um, they, uh, uh, again, they went through with a gunpowder paste and uh, uh, rubbed that on the, the door frames and the, around the windows. Um, they, they gathered a, num of, a number of uh, chairs and other flammable material and uh, created little bonfires. They set drapes afire and uh, Pretty soon, the uh, the entire building uh, was up in flames. It's, some of the British uh, soldiers uh, actually felt um, a sense of regret about it. This was uh, uh, such a beautiful building, and um, it was it was hard not to uh, um, feel some regret at seeing such a place go up in flames. Um, but again, the the, the British um, antipathy towards Madison. Uh, was so great that uh, you know any regrets were were pretty much overshadowed by the the hope that this would force uh, the United States to um, make a quick peace. For the British, um, who'd been locked in this uh, incredible struggle with France for two decades at this point, the uh, U.S. declaration of war in 1812 against Great Britain was just an act of enormous treachery. They felt that they were trying to save the world, save civilization from Napoleon, and for the United States to stab them in the back uh, was an unforgivable act. And um, you know, for the first two years of the war, they'd been tied up with the, the fight with Napoleon. But uh, when that war seems to be over uh, and they have more forces to send over, there, there was certainly an element of revenge uh, that, um, that uh, flowed through the mind of many of the, the, the soldiers and sailors that marched into Washington 200 years ago. To me, any, anybody who uh, listens to the Star Spangled Banner or sings it, you know, has to understand that uh, this first verse that we all sing at, at baseball games, uh, or you listen to at, uh, during the Super Bowl, you always have to remember that that verse ends in a question mark because uh, Key really didn't know uh, what the future was going to hold for, for the United States at that moment.